back to the channel. Um, quick discussion of date. This is probably my most asked question when people are looking for a custom knife. Um, and that is the steel type. I ask them whether they want a stainless steel or a carbon steel. And the big question is, what's the difference? All right, here we have a couple of knives um, that are in the process. Uh, this one here is a carbon steel. This one's carbon steel. This one's stainless steel. As, as you can see, there's not a lot of difference between them at the moment. Um, so, as a new knife, not really a lot of difference. Uh, this one's finished and sharpened. It's been put away in its sheath and it's waiting to go to its new owner. Um, so, let's put it back in there. All right. This is the one I've been working on on the last couple of videos, putting the sharp edge on it. You can see here it's just got a bit of gunk and that sort of thing on it. So before it goes out to the client, and he's on his way at the moment to come pick it up, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and it just gets a little spray of that. And that just cleans up any sort of stickiness from the tape that I use to protect it. Any wax that's left over from where I've polished the handle and the brass work just brings it up nice and clean. As you can see there. Now, with it being a carbon steel knife, normally when I ship them, I put a bit of oil on them. Just a cheap, generic coconut oil. Uh, because the owner's coming to pick it up, I'm not going to spray this one today. Uh, but this puts a nice little protective coat on it and it'll keep that keep the carbon steel from reacting with the environment while it's being shipped so that one's just gonna stay as it is today this one here it's still in the process it still hasn't had its sheath made yet uh, this is having a leather sheath on it which I've still got to do now deliberately when I've waxed the antler on this one I've taken the wax down over the blade uh, because it's carbon steel and I want to protect that carbon steel I don't want it reacting to the environment uh, for it to react to the environment ideally I like that to happen when it's in the owner's hands all right now a few examples of older knives this one here is my stainless steel knife That one is my carbon steel cooking knife. This one is the first knife I made, which is also out of carbon steel. And this one here is a carbon steel knife with a force patina on it. Now, the patina is the coloration it picks up. As you can see with my cooking knife, that hasn't had a force patina, but it picks up the coloration of the food you cook. As you cook with it, it will the acids in the food, the fats in the food will react with the steel and it will change the color of the steel. Um, so you get this graying and black areas and that sort of thing. That's as the acids reacting to it. This one was done all at one time. Uh, it was basically I wrapped it up with a cloth soaked with vinegar and forced that coloration onto the blade. You can see there's a couple of deeper spots. There's a couple of brownie spots, but mainly it's the grey. Um, originally carbon steel knives were called black steel knives. Uh, old butcher knives and that sort of thing tend to be black steel knives. Uh, they color up with the use. So over time they gain the color 
and the patina gives it some protection from the environment. Uh, it will rust, you want to take care of it, you want to clean it, you want to dry it as soon as you're done with it. Um, this little fella, I don't use it too often, but it has got a couple little marks in it where it's picked up some coloration up here at the end of the sheath on the handle, that sort of thing. This is one that sits in the back of the car. It sits in a dry environment. It sits in a leather sheath. Uh, you also tell people they shouldn't be in leather sheaths, but yeah, as long as it's in the leather sheath, and I normally put some beeswax in the leather sheath, and it's in a dry environment, and it goes in dry, it's fairly good. With the kitchen knives, you wanna make sure with your carbon steel, when you use it, you clean it. Um, that's just a matter of giving it a wipe down with some, some warm water, with a bit of dishwashing liquid in it. That's all it needs. And then once you've cleaned it, dry it off. And you get you know, the beautiful pattern, patination patina in it. Um, and I like the fact that the patina in it, it fits with the person's kitchen and it fits with the person's cooking style. So over time, each knife, you know, I can make exactly the same knife for two different people and each person's kitchen will change the way that the steel shows. So it's, to me, that's something special. You know, each knife becomes custom not only from me making it, but custom from them cooking with it. And I think that's a beautiful thing. This knife is about 18 months old, as I said in the other video. Um, you know, it's not blackened off. It's got a nice attractive gray color, a couple of little dark spots where it's been on some more acid foods, that sort of thing. This is a stainless steel one and it's about 12 months old. As you can see, the color hasn't really changed on it. So the big difference between stainless and the carbon is the way it reacts to the environment. Stainless will not react to the environment. You can leave it a little wet, that's okay. You don't wanna leave it wet all the time though. Um, so it's not gonna to react to the environment the same way as the carbon steel will. And conversely, the carbon steel will take a sharper edge and it will hold that edge for longer. Um, so the carbon steel tends to be a little bit sharper and it'll hold that edge for a longer time. Um, to be technical, there's chromium molecules within stainless steel to make it stainless steel. The chromium molecules do not take as fine, fine an edge and they also blunten off more quickly than, than the iron molecules do. Um, so yeah, carbon steel, more reactive. Stainless steel, less reactive. Carbon steel, sharper, holds the edge for longer. Stainless steel, not quite as sharp and doesn't hold the edge quite as long. Now it's called stainless steel, that's uh, that's actually a misnomer. Um, it does stain, it does rust. Here's a little piece from out in the garage that's been sitting in water. Um, you can see that it's picked up some little bits, especially on that cut edge. You know, it's picked up a couple little bits of rust, but they're tiny little flecks, you know, not a big deal. Here we have a piece of carbon steel that was in the same environment. Lots and lots and lots of rust on it. Um, yep, so you definitely do not want to leave water on your carbon steel. Big no-no. Um, now, these are all simple steels. They're easy to heat. Heat treat steels. Uh, the carbon is a 12C27. Oh, sorry, the stainless is a 12C27. 27 stainless steel, which is simple to heat in a gas forge. Uh, you take it up to 1080 degrees Celsius, you hold it there 
four or five minutes and then you quench it. The carbon steel, you take it up so it's non-magnetic, which is critical to temperature. You go a little bit above that and you quench that. So they're both simple steels, simple example of the steels. You can get more, more scientific blends. Um, you can get much more advanced stainless steels, which do come close to competing with the carbon steels as far as edge holding ability um, and how sharp they can come. But they're a lot trickier to work with. You've then got to use a heat treat oven and, and that sort of thing. So for the simple stuff, your 12C27, which is a basic knife maker's carbon steel, 1084, a basic knife maker's carbon steel, sorry, stainless steel, carbon steel. Uh, for the basic stuff, these are the ones, these are the way that they react. Um, so, yeah, there we are. So that sort of answers the question of what's the difference between them? Because, yeah, it's a question I do get asked a lot and I just wanted to have that so I could show people. Thanks very much.